Hi guys, Jason here, Jason's Create Adventures. So I just wanted to kind of give you a better quality video because when I try to do this live, it uh, just doesn't do so well. Some about this garage, I don't get very good signal here and it gets all digitized and warps the sound and everything and it doesn't come out so good. So, um, let me give you a better overview of the stuff I've made. And in the camera, things are reversed. So things that are on the right are actually on the left. So I'm going to be moving this way, but essentially I'm actually moving the opposite way. So it's just because everything's kind of reversed. It, I don't know why it's that way, but it is. But uh, as you know from postings on Facebook, if you're following me on Facebook at all, I painted the walls in the garage white on both sides. I haven't done I haven't done above the garage door yet, but I plan on doing that. But I put these black I put these black cleat strips up on the wall here and I didn't do it on this side yet. I don't know if I'm going to need to but at some point I'm probably going to put a cleat system over there. And so over here I made this yellow shelves. And I built that out of scrap wood and put a back on it and put a cleat on it and hung that up there. Now I'm keeping some stuff up there. I made this completely out of scrap wood. Everything's backwards, so when I try to move the wrong way. Um, I made this. This is a design I saw all over YouTube with making these slots. And these weren't made the best, and I'm hoping this is going to hold up because this wasn't made the best. I'm making all these things out of scrap wood. So I got all this scrap wood underneath the table, and I made these two holders up here, which if you see how I made these two, I'm surprised these are still staying up with all that weight. I think those are going to come apart, so I'm going to have to take, those, take all this wood off and remake those more like what i made these two which are more solid pieces of wood this one is barely hanging by a nub part of the cleat on this piece of wood um has barely got much wood keeping it attached in fact i'm surprised that it didn't break off and it's holding so i'm not going to mess with it i'm going to try to leave it as long as possible till i can address it and remake them a little bit better, redesign them. <clears throat> but uh, these two greenish, grayish shelves are shelves that I found on the side of the road a few years back. And they were white with pink insides. And I took and spray painted them this olive green color. And just the other day, it's not the, and nothing's really all that level. This is a box that I made that sat on the bench that sat actually in this exact spot against the wall with a light up here. And I had my, some of my tools on a pegboard over here. I took that whole thing apart and put this stuff here to create room. It's created a lot more room. Um, so this is um, my charging station right here. And I've got all my batteries charging over here. Here's my drills for right now. Got two heart drills. My air guns for my air gun nailer. And my other pen nailer all runs off the air compressor. And uh, I made this wrench holder and let... Elena repainted after I had painted it. This holder for these other wrenches and stuff um, 
needs to be painted. So does this. This I just finished the other day. I glued these on. These shelves are loose. And I'm going to have those. I'm going to paint those eventually. This I think I'm going to redo because a lot of these holes just it's not really the best design. It's it's going okay. But I think I want to redesign a little better after what I really have. I still got to make something for pliers. And I saw a design where it was just a small dowel going fairly close to the back of a holder. And the plier handles would go over and just set in and the top was pointed up. And they just sat in there like that. I think I'm going to try that design for now until I think of something better or see something better on as I watch YouTube videos and see how other people are doing it. But I think that's one of the most common ways I see people doing that. Um, here's that rack that I built. That This side is my four chainsaws and some of my automotive stuff, my stable, the true fuel for my chainsaws, um, automotive cleaning stuff, and um, my spray paints are temporarily on here. I plan on building a set of shelves that are going to go up on this cleat system somewhere on this wall, and it's going to be one paint can deep so I can see every paint can. I don't know how tall I'm going to make it, or how low it's going to be, or how tall it's going to set. But it's got to be so I can easily get to all the paint cans that are on there, spray cans, and then do something else for paint cans somewhere else. So I've been thinking about this table is um, 8 feet by, where's my tape measure? Excuse me. It's eight feet. by just shy of three feet it's like one inch shy of being um, a full actually a half inch shy if you see that the numbers are probably going to be backwards but if you see that it's a roughly a half inch short of being a full full three feet wide and then I got this shelf underneath that I'm keeping all this scrap wood under. And then I got different things of scrap wood, bigger pieces up against the wall. I got some over there. I got some that has the sideboard from um, the uh, table that I turned into the coloring table for my kids is right there if you see the wheel sticking up right there and then there's a piece of one piece of the shelving from the basement and there's more right there um let's see this way right there if you see those laid up again those were really long i had to zip those in half that's why there's an, an uncapped up end right there because on some of them i have a full bottom of two by fours and the other all of them are like that because I zipped them in half roughly um, I'm gonna say that those were probably 12 feet long and I zipped them almost right in half so they're about six or seven feet long even after I cut them in half and I don't know how they got that long of lumber into the basement with the way my house is constructed they had to go through one of the basement windows or something to get it in there because i don't understand how they got it in there otherwise but uh, there's my cheap table saw 
Here are these uh, Miles Craft. Um, they're called um, fence clamps, and it makes it so you can have a zero clearance sacrificial board. So if your blade gets too close to the um, rip fence, you're hitting wood that you um, plan on just throwing away after it gets hit too many times. So anyway, I saw some, per I thought I heard someone pulling in, but uh, let me switch this a little bit. There's my smaller wood chipper from Harbor Freight. There's my log splitter from Harbor Freight. There's my Hitachi um, miter saw with on hooked up to this Mastercraft stand. Master Force, sorry. Then over here is like I'm still addressing this corner. And if we go over here, here is my other side of this um, cart I built to hold stuff. And it's still a work in progress. I have my battery powered weed whacker on top. Got all my, most of my clamps right here. This is pretty much all my clamps. There might be, no, that should be everything. That should be all my clamps right there. All these little ones and then these. One of them's missing a nub on them. Look right there, it's missing the yellow nub. I don't know what happened to it. If I find it, I'm gonna have to reattach it. No idea where that's at. But here, I've got my Slud chambers and axes, um, clamps, hammers, a um, couple different kinds of corner clamps. Got this uh, Automax. It actually is part of the uh, uh, pocket hole jig thing. The uh, Craig Craig brand pocket hole clamp has the uh, this flat piece that goes against the flat part of the board on the outside and then this is supposed to clamp inside one of the pocket holes so you can keep the board together while you're screwing in pocket holes so it's one way to do it I have it I haven't used it very much it's been awkward to use I got these clamps that are supposed to bolt into my work table, but I just haven't found a spot that I feel that I can use them permanently, but someday I'll be able to put them in. Those are Tool Shop brand, and I just got those from the uh, Menards. Here's my leather working station. I actually looked at my leather that's been sitting out here in the garage through freezing winters and hot summers. And the thinner leather is actually, um, hasn't got moldy. I haven't checked the thicker stuff yet, but it looks like I could still use this to make a couple more journals yet or something else. Here's some of my leather working tools, some of my um, stamps to do different designs. And all the stuff on this table that I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to make to put them up there somewhere or reconfigure this somehow so it works better. It's a work in progress and it might take moving things down or up or blah, blah, blah. It's going to be some reconfiguring around here. So there's my drywall T-square.
This is where I keep most of my hardware in these cases. But I got a bunch of different wood. I did have a bunch of wood over here that is now up there. So I'm clearing out some space over there. And then that's where I keep my drill press, my, um, not jigsaw, but, uh, um, my, uh, you guys know what it's called, but, um, bandsaw, a bandsaw, here's my router table, and regular router, and my, a trim router, right here, trim router, regular router, and a table, router router table strip sander here's my air compressor my planer my scroll saw my six inch disc sander and combo belt sander my grinder So I've got plenty of tools to be able to do stuff with. And I did finally get this on here. I'm seriously considering cutting this work table in half because of how much room it takes. I thought about taking it down to, um, I don't know, I'm trying to decide whether it's worth my time to cut this table down to either cutting it to like four feet or to five feet, just cutting it, making it a little shorter to create some room and move that side of the end there, those legs, move them over this way somewhere and shortening up a little bit to create some more space in the garage. I just haven't quite committed to that decision yet. And I uh, just can't fully decide to do that. Here's that uh, vacuum cart for dust collection. It's been cattywampus because sometimes these tips don't exactly fit into the dust collection ports of my different tools the best sometimes. And sometimes you got to kind of just kind of barely fit them in there so let me find a spot for you all right so that's pretty much a tour of the garage i mean i'm sure there was a couple things i didn't talk about but um, I guess I could show you guys uh, those hangers better. The hangers on the other side that those bikes are hanging off of. I want to put a hanger up there for my that green chip chipper and put it up on that wall right there. And I have it I have a couple sitting right over there that I could, in this pan right here, I could put one of those up or both of them up there. I could put one in that dead space between the window and that stuff hanging. The space between here and there. I could put one or both of those there if I wanted to. Um, one of those think broom hangers, put the broom hanger up there and it's got a, um, a mop and a couple of brooms up there. Got a couple strollers hanging up. Um, as soon as my niece or my, as soon as my, not my niece, but my nephew comes by, he's getting ready to have a kid in July. 
um, they are going to take their pick of a couple of strollers if they want. And whatever they don't take, we're probably going to get rid of them. But we're going to keep our double stroller for a little while yet until Gabby gets a little bigger. They're starting to get too big to really stroll them around, though. So, but uh, it's coming along pretty good. There's my trailer that I've got some stuff laying in, them, some branches that fell in a storm. And uh, I'll take you in the back and show you what happened to my greenhouse. I mean, you guys have seen pictures, but I'll show you a video of it. Here's where I'm keeping some spare wood. And eventually I'm going to have to come back here and address this and everything. But my greenhouse, if you can see it, over there is in a bunch of pieces there's no way i'm going to salvage anything from it too many things were damaged and bent and ripped and things like that but uh i got to get out here and start taking all the nuts and bolts out and separating it and getting it all piled up so this looks like an eyesore right now then I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do this year for, um, I just got to uh, buy plant starts and put them directly in the ground when it gets a little closer. I can probably go buy plant starts right now maybe and be able to put them in the ground. And, um, uh, Let's see here. Let's give you a... This is really settled. This is my bed made from a border of logs. My daughter's been out here putting tomato steaks in the ground. Ooh, something's coming back. That's rhubarb. I think that's rhubarb that's coming up. I don't know if my uh, asparagus is going to come back up. But look at all this bull thistle that's already coming up and making like a champ that I'm going to have to figure out what to do about. That's bull thistle there. And I got to get this fence up. I've got some better hardier um, metal things that'll keep that up better. Here is my compost bin and it has been settling which tells me that there's a lot happening here. So it was all the way up here with stuff and it is settled. There is who knows what in here and I need to get it over here with my pitchfork and my um, wheelbarrow and start taking things out and mixing it around so it can it can kind of heat up and do some more here but there's a bunch of grapefruits that went bad that never got to eat good enough eggshells and things there's a whole different amount of stuff plus some trash that should not be in here put that over there for now high winds have brought some trash into my backyard that I gotta clean up here's my three beds that I have sawdust in that I gotta mix around I get some topsoil and top it off and put some compost in So here's another thing I gotta do. Gotta get out here and take some of these limbs up from up there, that limb. I gotta take that limb right there down to where those are down 
and take more of this off. And I don't know how I'm going to get all the way up there. I do got an extension ladder, but that is a lot of stuff to cut by myself. When Alex moves his truck one well, of these days after I can get my chainsaw kit, I'll get that. Here's my experimental bed, which I might get rid of this year. And wood chip all these sticks up, the ones that'll go through it anyway. This wood chipper of mine doesn't take really thick stuff. Maybe up to two inches if I'm lucky. Maybe an inch and a half, I'm not sure. And it's got some busted up plastic parts in the feeding part because most of it's plastic. And so you got to be real careful about using it. But I'll probably chip up most of this and take all this and put in one of the other beds and figure out something else. Maybe I'll just put some grass seed down and let it grow back. Don't know. That pretty much concludes most of what's going on in this garage, the important stuff anyway, the stuff anybody would probably care about. He likes to see shop, garage shop tours, I guess. I just got to keep working at it, getting things organized, just getting things under control. And that's what I'm working on right now. So thanks for stopping by. I'm going to go ahead and post this. I'm not going to edit this because uh, I don't have the ability to do an edited video right now because both my computers have some major problems because... I'm not very, I'm good at the creative stuff, the making things, the make, editing videos, stuff like that. But what I'm not good at is security with viruses and hackers getting into my computer and trying to do stuff, putting whatever on my computer and trying to scan me from um, trying to pay them several hundred dollars to come and fix the problem that they hacked into my computer to put on anyway. Things like that. So I've got a I'm not really good about setting up the security. I did buy McAfee and put on my computer, on both computers, and I know that there's things going on on my old old laptop, and it didn't find anything, even though I know there's something on there. And on my new computer, it's starting to have some similar problems. So I need to, as soon as I can round up the money, I'm going to get on there and um, see what I can do. What I really need to do is take my computers into Geek Squad or some other computer techs and have them show me how to better run security and, and virus stuff on my computer and what I really need to do to keep from having that stuff happening in the future. So, I'm going to get busy making some more stuff. i got to spray paint some things. i got to make some things. And i got to get busy. Talk to you all later. Bye.